coming down. Bring the canopy down. All right, canopy is closed and locked. Yep. We'll say it out loud. Canopy closed and locked. All right. Now let's close our windows so that the dust doesn't go and slide your window forward. Yep. There you go. Yep. All right. Now let's watch the rope as it comes tight. Make sure that there are no knots or loops in the rope. Do you know that if there's a knot in the rope, it can reduce the strength of the rope by half? Really? Yes. Just by one knot? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the rope is tight. Yep. All right, now look at your wingman. And uh, glider two. Okay. Give, him a, give him a thumbs up. Left, two. All right, now wiggle, wiggle the rudder pedal full throw three or four times. All right, we're going to start with the stick back. We're going to keep our wings level. The important thing is wings level. Okay, now we're flying. Now we're going to stay low. So that the tow plane has a chance to get off. If we get too high, we'll pull his tail up. Now when he's turning, what I'm doing is banking at the same angle he is, which actually is less than you think. And I'm pointing the nose of the glider at his outside wing tip. You see that? See I'm pointing out there? Rather than, rather than this. So if you point at the outside wing tip like that, and match his bank angle, you stay in the same radius of turn. Then pull the release. Yeah, just then pull the release. Make sure the door opens away. Bear to the right. Come around to the right. Alright, now we're going to level out. And we're going to follow him around. And watch it. Look, there's a hang glider at 12 o'clock high and a couple of paragliders at 9 o'clock high. Okay. Alright, you ready? You're flying. Now I've got the trim set to fly at around 45 knots. Okay? So we want to fly right around 45 to 50. I'll give you a 5 knot range. So let's make a gentle left turn. So first clear to the left. Alright, say so clear on our left. Clear on our left. Make sure nobody's near us. Look straight ahead and start to roll into a left turn. Watch your yaw strain. Look straight ahead as you turn. Make sure the yaw strain is pointed right back at you. A little less rudder pedal. There you go, see that? some sink, level out and fly straight. Let's make a 90 degree turn to the right. No, I want you to clear first. And clear right. Look all the way back as far as you can. Okay, clear it out now. Clear right. Okay, now look straight ahead and roll in. Start your roll out. Fly at about 50. Oh, we've got a little bit of lift here. Continue the circle. Keep going. Look at there. Keep turning. If you don't slow it to a stay right around 45 to 50. There you go. Keep turning. Get the turn going. Don't get too slow though. Stay at least at 45, all right? Okay. There we go. Because we're close to the ground here. Keep it going. Let's turn going. A little more bank angle. There you go. That's it. Good. That's very good. Very good. Turn 
you going? Yeah, good, good, good. Don't forget to use your rudder pedal when you bank in. And then ease off the rudder pedal. So leave with the rudder pedal and then, then ease off the rudder pedal. As you coordinate your turns. Good, you're doing good. Very nice. Make sure you lost one. It's pointing straight back at your face. Are we having fun yet? Yeah. <laughs> You're doing good. You're doing really good. Uh oh, oh now I spoke too soon. Look at that yaw string. What the heck was that? <laughs> Keep that yaw string straight back. There you go. the yaw string tends to kind of bend in toward the turn that's because you're using a little too much rudder pedal so ease off the rudder pedal now, now you see when, when you put more stick into it you'll see that the, uh, the yaw string bends the other direction what you want to do is have a slight slip the skid in other words, where the yaw string is kind of pointing to our left. Uh, the skid is left, less efficient, and you don't want to skid the glider. If anything, a little bit of a slip is okay. But only slightly. The main thing is to try to keep the yaw string pretty much pointed straight back at you. There, now we're coming back into our lift again. Let's try a little gentle left turn, but let's watch him too. Okay. So let's make a turn to the left. Okay, let's keep an eye on him. Oh yeah! Fix, fix the Austrian. The lift is a little more, see where this ridge is, this little road? The lift, I think, is a little bit more that way. We seem to uh, lose our lift as we come more underneath the, the paragon. So, we do another 180 degrees of turn. We've got some sink here to come on around. Bring it on around some more. Now start to level out. Take your time, coordinate, but keep the yaw string where it belongs, okay? Now give it a couple of seconds and start to roll in again. Make sure you clear before you turn. Clear your line. Especially since we know we have traffic up there. He's out climbing this, isn't he? Yeah. Watch your yellow screen. You notice, Alex, as you steepen up your bank angle, how you have to kind of hold opposite stick in order to keep the bank from overgoing, you know, overbanking. That's called overbanking tendency. And once the glider gets to around 45 degrees of bank, it wants to keep rolling. So you find yourself putting a little bit of opposite aileron in just to maintain the bank angle that you want. At the shallower bank angles, you need to hold just a little aileron into the turn to keep the glider from leveling out. See, now we got 600 feet of it up here. That's very good. 
Keep it turned on. Yostrip. I don't want you to stare at the instruments now. I want you to be looking outside at the Austrian and the horizon line, okay? Besides, we need to be... We need to be vigilant for other traffic also. Woo! There you go. Yeah, turn in back. That's it. Okay. A little bit of back pressure. Yeah, feed in just a slight bit of back pressure. There you go. Yeah. That's good. That's very good. We're getting 600 feet a minute up. Uh oh, you string. When you see it starts to go funny on you, Go ahead and fix it. And let me take it for a second. What I want to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna level out and fly straight in a second here. But, but I want to show you what happens to the yaw string as you move the controls. In other words, if we move the stick but we don't use the uh, the rudder pedals, I'll show you what the yaw string does. See so, now look we're at 5200. We've gained a thousand feet above our release. All right, now I'm going to level out here. Okay, ready? So it's left pedal, left stick. Keeping the yaw string straight. All back to the middle. Okay, now watch what happens when I don't use any rudder pedal at all. See how the nose of the glider... I went right, but the nose of the glider swung to the left momentarily. And see how the yaw string is slipped off? Now let's put it back all together again. Okay. Now, watch what happens when I use the rudder pedal. Let me get it back to normal position here. Now, watch what happens when I use the rudder pedal, but not the stick. See how it points inward toward the turn? And very efficient. Now, look what happens when I give it stick. See that? That's when it coordinates. So, when we use both a combination of the, the rudder pedals, and the stick at the same time. Now watch, we're going to go left pedal, left stick. We'll keep the yaw string straight back. There we go. Adjust our pedal just a little bit. See? Like that. And right pedal, right stick to roll out. Keep the yaw string straight back. There you go. Okay, you got it? Mm -hmm. Now you do that for me. Do the same thing. Start with just the ailerons. To the left. Notice what the glider does. To the left or right? Either direction. Go ahead and push. There you go. See how it slid to the left a little bit and then it came to the right? Yeah. That's because of aileron drag. We now level out. Now hold the stick steady and just push the rudder pedals. See what happens? Yeah. Now push the left one. Okay. See what happens to the Austrian? See that? Yeah. Okay, now get it all back in the middle again. And this time roll into a nice, oh, 20 degree bank angle using a combination of both the stick and the rudder, keeping the Austrian straight back at your forehead. Clear right to the Watching the Austrian. Very nice. Little adjustments as necessary. Don't bank too much, but maintain your shallow bank. Okay, now start your rollout. Feed in rudder and stick. Ah, uh, time just right. That looks very, very nice. That's very nice. It's a matter of timing, isn't it? Yeah. When you're circling like this, Alex, if you notice the nose drop and the glider starts to increase in speed, shallow the, the bank angle a little bit and then slow the glider up. Because if you're flying at a, like I said, you know, if you're in a 45 degree, uh, relatively steep bank angle, as you pull the stick back, it's only going to increase the rate of the turn. It won't, uh, it won't reduce your speed. 
So the trick is to shallow the bank angle and then pull back on the stick a little bit and that will reduce your, your speed. Where's our airport? Could we make it back there to land? Uh, we could, but we're high. You feel like you have plenty of altitude to do that? Maybe. We're too high. Have you read anything about look down angles? Look down angles? Yeah. No, I didn't see it. No? Yeah. Go ahead and, and start to read through the lessons and the workbook. And uh, one of the things that the Tom Knopf book talks about are look down angles. And, you know, you're looking down right here. We're sitting, we're perched up here, right? And we're looking down at that runway at an angle. So, in other words, straight down would be 90 degrees, or, or let's say zero degrees and straight out the wingtip would be 90 degrees. So about half of that would be 45 degrees, right? Yeah. So if we're looking down at that angle somewhere between 30 and 45 degrees, then we know that we can get back there. We know that we can land there. So those look down angles are used to determine whether we can make it to a place and also in the landing pattern to determine where we want to touch down with. So you might want to do some reading up on look down angles and uh, go out in your front yard, your backyard, and pace off a, a few relative steps like the book shows and kind of get a sense of what that, what that looks like. That's going to help you immensely when you start practicing your landings. So between 3,000 feet and 2,500 feet, we'll start to go through our pre-landing checklist. We'll get that out of the way. talk you through the landing for as much as I can, all right? Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we want to hold our speed at 50 to 55. Go ahead and put the nose down and speed up to that speed. See what it feels like and sounds like. And we'll adjust our trim so that it'll fly that speed. See that? Yeah. So that's what we're going to want to do. Now go ahead and slow up a little bit again. And we're going to use nice medium bank, smooth, coordinated turns to roll in and roll out. Now let's do a 180 degree turn and we'll head back towards our IP, or initial point. Do you know what the initial point is here? Wasn't that that blue building or something? Yeah, it's an L-shaped building. Go ahead and do a 180 degree turn back. There, left. I'll, I'll handle the radio announcement. Now you see, follow the road, see the, the blue roofs, the turquoise roofs there? Yeah. Now look a little bit to the left and above, see that L-shaped building right at the road? It's kind of a white oh, roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the IP, the initial point. We want to be there at 2,500 feet. Let's start to go through our pre-landing checklist now. So what do we have? So look all around to see if there's any other converging aircraft. Okay, what's next? Obstacles. Okay, let's look on the runway to see if there's any obstacles on the runway. The runway looks clear. What's next? Wind. Well, we're going to assume the wind was the same as when we took off. Yeah. For now. Now, airspeed. Okay, so airspeed. set your speed. We're going to adjust our trim so that you're flying at around 50 to 55. Okay, there we go. Alright, what's next? Uh, retractables. Okay. We don't have any. Fixed gear. Uh, and dive brakes. Okay, check the dive brakes. 
Check the dive brakes. Okay. And close them. You don't have to lock them, but just close them. Now keep your hand on the dive brakes. Okay, what's that? What else? That's it, huh? Yeah. Okay, let's do a 45 degree entry lift. I'm going to do the radio announcement. Okay, 45, keep your speed up. 50 to 55. Nelson, our traffic, glider 3097 Mike, entering a 45 for a right downwind, runway 11 right, Nelson. Downwind leg. So start to parallel the runway. Take a little left turn. Be real definite. There you go. Right. You'll have a very slight tailwind on landing, but it's not very much. Okay. Maintain your speed. Now we're gonna we're gonna fly past our aim point, which is midway on the runway. A little bit past where the two runways converge, where the, the takeoff runway is and the landing runway. Whoops, watch your speed. I'm gonna adjust our trim so that you're more inclined to fly at that speed. How's that? Okay. Now let's go ahead and start our base leg turn. Nice medium bank turn, roll in, roll it right on in. There you go. We level out, fly straight. Okay, now we're a little bit high, we can use a little bit of spoilers. Okay, okay now start your turn, watch your speed. Fly at about 55. Start your turn. Line up on the runway. Okay, maintain your speed. Line up. Level out. Okay, now we're going to use a little bit of spoiler. Maintain your speed. Now, notice our aim point is, is rising a little. So we're going to go a little bit beyond that. Maintain your speed. Now we're going to start to use a little more spoiler. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to help you with this at this point. And we're going to float a little bit in ground effect here. Right? And while we do that, we're going to slow down. And keep flying until the wing touches down. And we did it. Yes. That was nice work, Alex. You did a great job. Okay, now go ahead and open. Can you lift that up? Just like that. There you go. Good, very good. All right. Good work. I did a little bit of talking, but he did the flying. And between the two of us, we were able to gain over a thousand feet of altitude. Uh, we got uh, above tow release, by the way. Um, we lost uh, probably uh, 800 feet, then we regained that thousand feet back to release altitude. Then we gained another thousand feet on top of that. So it was a good flight. Mm -hmm. Here's my right. logbook. Here we go.